so I got this magnetic dodecahedron. <laughs> um, and so I think the knobs on the Roman dodecahedron are so you can look at like spatial relationships or possibly map certain different kinds of spatial relationships for using it as a calculation device. <laughs> um, which you could possibly use like musically as in like so there's 12 there's like 12 pentagons in here and there's 12 notes in a chromatic scale I could go on but anyway so to get to what I started this video for um so I put I made my own rules here <laughs> warning so starting from this square right here where you see the knot, which is where it ended intentionally. Um, I tried to make it so that through this square you would see a star. So it would be like a 2D golden ratio representation here and that each, um, each division of an angle, so each time an angle here is like Bisected? Well, it's like a triangle. I've confused myself. Each time an angle is like branches off into two to make a star, right? It's a golden ratio triangle. So the longer side is to the shorter side is the same as the golden ratio. So anyway. To preserve that in a 2D environment, but in the 3D thing, because as you can see looking through here at this yellow pentagon, um, they're not directly across from each other. It's both flipped, or if you wanted to, shifted slightly, and um, also like at a bit of an angle, so it's not like a perfect flip. Okay, I mean it is a perfect flip because this is a perfect shape, but um, I mean, this is a platonic solid, so those are pretty perfect. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, here's what I did. So I'll just trace it with my finger. Where did I start? So I went here, went down to this point here, and then from this point here, I went across to this point here. Um, and there's really not many options you can take so that this will work. So this is kind of like it seems like this is a rule for a dodecahedron, if you will. Alright, and so from, and the reason why is because otherwise you're going too close to it, like to one side. So every face, so let's say this here is the top, alright, so the start point and then this would be like the back point, so like the front and the back. So the front has five pentagons, one on each side, and then the back has five pentagons, one on each side, and they like clip together like by shifting slightly, so it's like two bowls of pentagons, and you like just pop one down on top of the other, as you can see there. That's, this would be like the bottom bowl, and then this would be the top bowl, <laughs> okay. So anyway, I hope I didn't just ruin my the fun thing <laughs> that I just found. Okay, so going around making a gold ratio 2D as close as I could get it. Um, obviously it's problematic to have to wrap it around the corners because you don't get nice straight <laughs> lines. <laughs> I mean that's also my wrapping skills. Um, but it would be much much easier if I had a nub because then you could just like intertwine it or just like wrap it around instead of having to like do a weird knot thing that makes it so you can still kind of keep it tight. I don't know. I'm not good at knots. Okay, so <laughs> um, go from here to here. So you basically have to go across um, because otherwise like what I was saying with the bowl, like here you can't go to any of these so you're going to somewhere over here and to get it in the 2D thing so that on here it would be like this corner looking thing so that would be this string right here 
which connects to here, right? So you're going like straight across there, okay? And you could have gone here, I suppose. And actually this corner didn't get used. I mean, there's 20 vertices on here. So each corner is a vertice. And there's five, um, I guess, actions in a star. So like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so like five points would be used. So not a lot's gonna be used, but anyway. So, <laughs> going on. So then this one goes down to there. And then to complete the star, we come back up conveniently to this one. Okay, and this is actually kind of a shorty string, but that's where it ended up. So this is the first run, but I'm thinking on like beginner's dumb luck. So I wanted to record this just in case I like nailed some dumb luck shit. All right, so here's your star. So the relationships in 3D showing it projected in 2D, right? So this is like, it's like a projection machine. Ooh. I have, I really want this to like make a teleportation equation. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, which is also, I think, the harmony of the spheres. Okay, I could go on. It's gonna get crazier and this is like, this is just like mathematical logic and feel free to logic it differently. Okay, so here it's like three, you see that star, and then like in other ones you see the star, but in some of them, like, you can see the star in different, but in some, and then let's see, where's the start? So this is like shifted, like here's the, <laughs> that probably didn't help, that just confused me. Come back. Okay. I'll go back to that. So here you just see like they're all like they don't visually cross except for one there. Like there's one this one that crosses them, but the other ones don't cross, so you don't you get a different it looks different. <laughs> It's not a star, it looks a lot more like parallel. Okay. So a star in 2D on projected in one thing, here's like a different projection. Okay. And I don't know if these are actually like parallel lines or where they're really connecting to because if I had knobs it would be a lot more precise. Um, because in addition to that, those little magnetic sections are kind of wiggly. So like the corners aren't quite um, pointy. <laughs> All right, okay, so we can just look at some other ones, like here. Here you can see. Uh, I mean, you can see it like a large one there, but if you look through the thing, you just get like a close-up of the star. And then here's another like, straight, mostly straight lines. Mm -hmm. I'm really nerding out right now. Probably no one else appreciates this. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, that's kind of a neat one. So these are the first trial run of the 3D star projection, and I said that there were stars in some of them, and where is this one? And, and almost. <laughs> and now I feel like I made that shit up. Maybe there's only the star in the one. These are like close-ups on it. Interestingly, is I think this could be the circle of fifths, and those are like close-ups. I wonder if they're like if you were to figure out the angles in them, if they'd be close-ups in a ratio that would position, like figure out what note that would be based on the um, the ratio of how big 
the shape dimensions are in that one compared to the original one figure out the ratio of like musically so like you could say what note it would be based on you could pick any note for this so like usually and we start with C but if we're gonna go like ancient Greeks I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say A <laughs> right or alpha <laughs> okay so they're musical notes I would assume and I think I read somewhere probably watched YouTube is like they used their alphabet so they also use their alphabet for numbers so numbers were letters like one was alpha um, two is beta three is gamma okay um, yes I was going with that. <laughs> oh yes, uh, so you could figure out the ratios harmonically to figure out um, bouncing around patterns and like if you can write, I think you'd be able to go in two different directions and write counterpoint and like change up this, um, like rotate the ball so like this is A. I don't know, let's say we figured out that this turns out to be like epsilon or something so you go to like epsilon and this would be like um, a different like mode in the circle of fifths, um, and then you from that or no, sorry, this would be um, <laughs> I'm mixing up modes and fifths. It's been like a couple weeks since I looked at that. So one of them's modes, and then the other is. Um, you know, when you in your circle of fifths and you switch to another scale, key signature, key signature, yes, and you modify the key signature because with modes, because modes change a note or two or the order of the scale based on different ratios. All right, so modes are based on ratios, notes are based on ratios, scales are based on ratios, <laughs> this is based on ratios, this is a giant circle of fifths mode ball, <laughs> all right, and also, um, I don't know, theoretical projective teleportation or so dodecahedron geometry. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Just rotating them through for later. When I get really confused. And do nice and slow. Yeah, so if I go along this way, I can like maintain that sideways-ish line, right? This is good. I'm glad I did this. Let's slow this down and watch it in my sleep. <laughs> All right, and then if we were to switch it this way, we're rotating it the other way. You see, it go in and out of becoming a star. That looks neat. <laughs> Doesn't that make you think this could teleport things <laughs> by making our Mass in a perpendicular dimension. <laughs> I don't know. Let's do another one. So I'm just rotating it and then rolling it along the salad bowl. <laughs> the start. The start one is this green one. Okay. This, the green one is there. <laughs> it's coming around again. That's not it. It's the next one. Alright. There's the star. Man, I wish this had knobs. That's all I'm saying. Roman dodecahedron out! 